Pump the brakes, kids. Let's talk about that RUGarbage.com, your one-stop shop for everything garbage. You got tickets coming up, and we got a little merch there. Check it out. Yes. Also, this week, we're going to be in Florida, baby. A few yeah. tickets, a couple tickets left in Tampa. Those two shows are about to be sold out. Woo. Then we're going to Danny Beach, Florida, limited tickets mm-hmm. there. And we're also going to Raleigh, limited tickets there. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to Louisville and also Cleveland and Columbus. Guess those tickets. The live shows are a good time, gang. Yeah. More dates coming. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's new favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians and we find out they grow up to be classy yeah. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're out back here at Tootie's in the new edition. Uh-huh. She's down in Arizona doing a little muling. Okay. Coyote's got their hands on her. Hopefully, uh-huh. she's back in a couple weeks, not empty-handed. Right. My co-host is coming at you from right next to me. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? He is an international businessman, and he's my best pal in the whole wide world. Aww. Give it up for KJ, Kevin James Ryan, everybody. What's up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are. True to real. Cooking. Cooking. Then the greatest website of all time, www.patreon.com. Gang, check it out. It's a fucking party over there. Yeah, and the second greatest website of all time, that rugarbage.com. Get yourself some tickies and some merch over there. Mm-hmm. Cooking. Got the domain name, baby. <laughs> and having a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the magic man. Makes us all look good. Works the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. He crosses the T's and he dots the I's. And now you can get a little sneak peek at him, ladies, on that Toby cam. Give it up for T-Bone McScruffins. Toby McMullen, everybody. <laughs> What up, dudes? What up, T-Bone? Hey, pal. Boys, we got a capo in from Jersey. (laughs) Took the boat in like a gentleman. It's got a Navy. (laughs) Came over on the USS Gabagool. That's what I'm talking about. Gang, the long hair ain't lying. We could not be more excited to have uh-huh. our incredibly, and I mean incredibly special guest, here with us today for the first time. He is a legendary stand-up comedian, actor, podcaster, and now author. And you may have seen him in, but not limited to. Here we go, gang. Put your seatbelts on. It's a long one. It's a worker. We got basketball. We got Arliss. We have NYPD Blue. <laughs> Analyze that. Dickie Roberts, ER, Cold Case, Law & Order, Special Victims Unit, Spider-Man 2, Taxi, The Longest Yard, How I Met Your Mother, Everybody Hates Chris, Mad TV, My Name is Earl, Wizards of Waverly Place, The Mentalist, General Hospital, Children's Hospital, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Grudge Match, you got Marin, Superior Donuts, Big City Greens, The Many Saints of Newark, Comic View, YMH, WTF, This Is Not Happening, Hot Ones, Tiger Belly, Danny's House, Lights Out with David Spade, The Cabin, The Comedy Store, and of course, The Joe Rogan Experience. He has multiple stand-up specials including 2016's socially unacceptable and netflix the degenerates he was the longtime host of the amazing podcast the church of what's happening now and he is currently the host of the fantastic uncle joey's joint and let me tell you this right now he is the author of this book right here tremendous the life of a comedy savage if you are a comedy fan this is an absolute must read ladies and gentlemen give it up for the legendary joey diaz everybody Let's go. Joey. Let's go. Look at him. What's happening, you Woo! savages? I am fucking embarrassed. Why? By what? I am totally embarrassed. Why? By no. killing it for 30 no, years? Yeah. I love you guys. Thank you for having me. Are you oh, kidding buddy, me? Of course. I always take that boat from fucking Jersey <laughs> over. I've been taking boats all my life. Rabs, fucking submarines. <laughs> you know? Submarines. Yeah, I took a submarine from Cuba. I'm nowhere in the docket. <laughs> my wife always comes downstairs. She's like, I... I looked at the immigration status. Yeah. Your uncle came, but I don't see you, your mom, or your dad. I'm like, Be a submarine, Jack. Pull the 23 and me. Ain't nothing there. No, 23 just, and who? We just popped up on the Hudson, <laughs> fucking went over to Union City, and the rest was history. Oh, oh man, man, I love it. I'll say this, though. I live out in Astoria in Queens, and they have a ferry there, too. Taking that ferry is nice. real classy. Instead of taking the path train or the subway in like an animal, you take that, you get a little fresh air out there. It's nice. 19 bucks round trip. Not bad. If I take the train, I'm going to save 13 bucks, but I'm going to have 1,001 aggravation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the I train don't know where sucks. I'm going, this and that. The guy, that you know, I, I know he's still around. No. There used to be a train, a guy on the train that the train would 
the A train. It would close the doors, and all of a sudden, the guy would go, "Can I have your attention, please? I'm gonna walk the train. I got COVID. I got a oh, ingrown yeah, toenail. Yeah, 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 I got yeah, yeah. AIDS. I got hepatitis C. I got a fucking pink eye." And he just ran through like a thousand ailments. And then he'd say, "Can anybody help?" <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. I can help you with the ingrown toenail. Everything else. I got some neosporin on me. <laughs> fucking trains were great in New York. Said so now you get stabbed. Now yeah. It's, yeah, it ain't great now. Now, now it's not bit. great. <laughs> it ain't yeah. great. I still remember getting on trains and like fucking being straight, but having like a rough night the night before. Mm -hmm. And you see things moving. And you're like, is that a fucking rat? A rat's on a train. <laughs> and there's thousands of them. And you're like, God damn, I got to stop smoking pot. <laughs> I got to st stop eating cornflakes. What the fuck? I keep seeing these little things. And they used to be mice in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They're rats now. When yeah, I was rats. here. Now they got luggage. <laughs> right? They got fucking luggage and shit. They're headed out to JFK wow. for a weekend. Asking wow. you for a swipe. Yeah. 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 Um, great. That's funny, man. Joey, give us the backstory just a little bit, a little childhood. Uh, give us give us the scoop here. Union City, right? Just Union great. City. It's just cr Union City, and then my father died, and my mom wanted to get out of the house because it was creepy, so she sold it and moved to 88th Street. Oh, 80, so oh when I Upper walked, West Side or yeah, Upper East? Yeah, this morning, Upper West Side. I'm oh, a West nice. Side guy. So west side I, till I die. I'm a West Side. Oh, man I too. love the West Side. <laughs> PS yeah. one sixty six. Yeah, the East Side is kind of like boring. Yeah, there ain't nothing there. Nah, West Side. You come out of your house, somebody's bleeding. <laughs> There's a fucking you know. It's always a story. You know? Not <laughs> anymore. Eighty eighth Street has like a fucking Whole Foods on the corner. Oh yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's real nice up there. Yeah, now. I see real people nice. sitting outside. Ha ha ha. When I was a kid, the corner there was a photography store, and. Family from, this is fucking crazy. You guys are too young. You remember it. Dark Shadows was a show on ABC in the afternoons. Okay. A guy named Barnabas Collins would come. He was like a fucking badass vampire with a big dick, and he'd come <laughs> bite you in the neck. I don't remember that but one. But if you look it up, it's hysterical. Their family owned that thing, and the kid that played like the Eddie Munster okay. always worked there. I'll Who the fuck shit. know? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> Stayed up there till about the third grade. Okay. No, I stayed up there till the fifth grade. I moved to Jersey in 73. Okay. But my mom always had a bar in Jersey. So my roots were kind of always in always Jersey. Always there. Still, still, still hanging out there. Yeah. So okay. I lived on 88th Street, went to PS 166. But my godmother lived on 148th in Broadway. I live up there. And that was the fucking neighborhood when yeah, you were a kid. The Heights, baby. Oh my God. That yeah. was a great neighborhood. Uh -huh. We'd walk to 125, get chased by gangs. <laughs> you know, it was fucking, it was a different world yeah. for a child, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, moved to Jersey. Mom sold the ball. In 78, we got locked down. Um, what was the name of the bar, if you don't mind me asking? El Relo. It's a Cuban bar. Called, it means the watch in Spanish, the clock. They serve food or just booze? At the time? Yeah. Well, my mom had a Cuban joint that did restaurant, uh, Cuban sandwiches and shit. Really? Oh, I didn't know. On like awesome. 32nd Street and I think it's New York Palisade Avenue. And then when she closed that in like 56, she opened the bar. Then they went back to Cuba. Had me and my sister. Damn, went back. Holy shit. Because my mom had gotten out of Cuba. That's why there's no record of my mom coming here. Because my mom was at a school dance with her sister when she was 14. I think my mom was a year older than her, whatever. And she was missing. So my mom went out looking for her, and the guy was raping my aunt, Rosita, who's still alive. So my mom got a rum bottle and broke it and stabbed the guy in the back. So Jesus she had to get her out of fucking Cuba overnight, and they shipped her here because we had family here. Okay. So she oh, damn. Came. So this happened in Cuba. My yeah. Bad, my bad. But then she, she came that. here as like a 16-year-old, whatever damn. the fuck she was. Her and a cousin, and they lived up in the Bronx, and they started running numbers. So she's a hustler. Yeah. She's an earner. So that's how the whole numbers racket came about. And then <laughs> the life and times of Joey Diaz. Then five or six years later, <laughs> she got she hooked up with a Puerto Rican chick, and they opened up their own bank. And then it became dangerous. It was like a woman's little fucking little candy store running numbers and they did it and then uh they Damn. went back to cuba came back my sister got stuck in cuba my sister wanted to 
finish out the school year. Okay. They went back after the revolution or before the revolution? They went back after the revolution. Okay. To try to bring my my grandmother back and all those fucking people. But those fucking commies didn't want to go anywhere. They were just settled in Cuba. They didn't know know what was on the horizon. Mm. They, They had no idea. So my parents came back. My dad died a week, maybe a month after he got here. I was like three. So that was, like, shocking. And then, uh, you know, it just flipped up the house. And I think 79 was when my mother died. And then I had to live with somebody and some friends from the neighborhood took me in. And I got into drugs and crime and, you know, all the other shit. Sure, sure. Ended up getting locked up and then came out. By that time, I had a hint about comedy. But where I was from, eh. They didn't talk about that. It's like being in Philly. Same Who spoke shit. to you about fucking I got going all- to theater? <laughs> Dude, I saw Nobody. I you know what I'm saying? Like, if I fucking ever fight, I want, I'm dying to fucking look up where my guidance counselor is buried. <laughs> so I go piss on his fucking grave. Because they never told you what was available to you. Uh-huh, you know, yeah. in Philadelphia, I had the same thing, you know. Even Philly, now, dude, even, I got uncles be like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, they don't get it. They don't fucking know. They're all like bricklayers and shit. Yeah, but no, it was like, uh, tell us that this is available. It's a possibility. I'm a fucking, I could swim here from North Bergen. Uh-huh. I would have came in and done acting classes. I didn't know I was in the comedy acting mecca of the fucking world. Sure. So I never even thought about it. Like, mm-hmm. arts, I think freshman year I joined some arts, the intro to performing arts. Okay. And we had a... Fucking, uh, I had to do the song, so I sang, I lip sync Shattered by the Stones. Uh-huh. And the lady pulled me aside, she's like, you're onto something. I'm like, what am I onto? I'm lip syncing. What the fuck am I onto? I'm not, you know. <laughs> you lip sync. Hey, it's crazy. Sh- what, so what, I was Kids are doing angry. Shakespeare monologues, you're yeah. doing Casey yeah, and the Sunshine Band. about that because Let's I wanted go. to know. Can you imagine if we would have gotten into this like a Mason? At 18. Sure, sure. If we would have all gotten into comedy or there was no podcasting, but anything. Something. We got into this. We fell into this by. Backwards. You yeah. know, backwards. Mm-hmm. We saw Eddie Murphy Raw. We saw yeah. Delirious. We saw something that inspired. Well, I could do what he does. I didn't start until I was 32. I had already lived up here for like eight years telling people I was an actor. I was just doing coke and working at a bar. Damn. And then went. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, though. <laughs> no, but we all do that. Yeah. I didn't start till I was 32. Yeah. 31, maybe? What was, no, I was 30. Yeah. But I was thinking about it since I was 27. So yeah. you did a lot better than I did. These guys <laughs> were all 10 years younger than me. Yeah. yeah. When we, yeah, st- yeah, when we yeah. started. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how you, and I always, I'm angry about a lot of things. Like, how can you not want to do something that you know is going to change your life? Yeah. Like, this is how junkied up I was. Like, I always knew, listen, I don't know what I got to offer, but I'm better than that fucking guy on NBC. Sure, sure. Okay? I, I'm better than that one motherfucker. Yeah, I got him. I could out-joke that motherfucker to death, okay? <laughs> you you get that anger. You get one guy, and you're like, I'm funny than that fucking uh-huh. guy. Sure. You know, and you just, and then you get into it. That took me to go into an open mic. I just yeah. went to watch for the first time, and I was like, oh, these people fucking suck. Like, I'm like, I can do it just as bad That's as that. It. I think I, I was on stage. He was. He, he, was the one, <laughs> he was the one I saw. I go, this fat idiot, I can do this. I was wearing a blazer and sweatpants. <laughs> it's so weird how you, like, yeah. I got, right before I got locked up, there was a guy that didn't kind of like me. We didn't like each other. He wasn't a bad guy. You know, like when you just... Sure, you just don't get you along. Sure. You act a weird way one day, and now it ruined it. And I tried to apologize to the guy, but he was just a hard-ass guy. And, and he came up to me once, and he goes, listen, I know you don't like me. I know you don't like me. I, would, I had to be maybe 28 at the time. Mm-hmm. And he goes, but do you know what I did before I had this job? He goes, I worked in entertainment for 25 years in Las Vegas. He goes, you got to get into comedy. Really? And I'm like, look at this fucking Humpty Dumpty <laughs> motherfucker. Get out of here. Trying to tell me what. But like a week later, I got arrested. Like right after he told me that. Sure, that'll later, resonate with Not you. even a week later, I got arrested. And that always, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck's he know? And then I got out and I fucking went, tried to get into school and shit. And then I got sentenced. Gotcha. And when I got sentenced was when I was, wait a second. With a felony, what am I going to do when I get out? <laughs> yeah. I can't even be a fucking acupuncturist. 
Imagine Joey. Did you want to? Did you want to do that? <laughs> Anything? I, I, I mean, I, I can't cut hair. I mean, <laughs> you can't get a license. You could, yeah. You yeah. Did you want to cut hair? No, but <laughs> but when you're fucking retarded and, and you're thirty, they're too so specific. And the fucking things. roads are closing to on you. <laughs> you know, oh, every God. road is closed yeah. when you're thirty. You know, sure you, are. if you think your life's over when you're fucking twenty. Wait till you're 30, and yeah. you've already like. And you got a felony on you. Yeah, you got a felony. You got some chick pregnant. She's hunting you down. The grandmother wants to suck your dick, you know. And now you're like really. Now you're pressured to get into something. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna be fucking. I'm gonna be 30. Yeah. I fucked around. I ate quaaludes. I got hepatitis. I got you know. I gotta settle down. That was where I was at. That, sure. That's a scary. Listen, when you're 20 and you have an idea, like I'm gonna go to college to be an underwater biologist. And then, you, and then you get there and you're like, I don't like fucking being underwater, <laughs> but I'll become a biologist. Sure. You're on the right path. You're at least in that sure. world. Guys like you and I, we, yeah, we could have gone to work with Uncle Vinny at the yeah, shop. Yeah, sure. We could have gone to the fruit stand or we could have worked at the warehouse. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you don't have that. And it kind of stays with you for a while. Like, oh, I want to be an actor. Fuck, I can't even work at a fruit stand. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I don't even know the tangerinas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so now, you, so we, we tend to get jobs that are, are money. You know, like when you're 20, you're like, I got a good job. I work yeah. at an elevator union. I make $38 an hour. Mm -hmm. I was waiting tables. Yeah, and then when yeah. you're 30 one day, you're like, I got to do something that I like. This ain't going to work. It's bad enough I got to get up and go to work. It's bad enough. I don't want to do it. I'd it much sucks, rather yeah. sell Coke. <laughs> I'd much rather cut through the shake and sell coke. Now you're speaking mug my language. somebody once a month. You know, I'll make ends meet. But that 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 always it's not gonna work for you. Sure. It's not gonna fucking work. Yeah. For you. <laughs> did you stay all through high school? Did did you did, did you, you do all high school? No. Nah. No. You were the, you were pretty. Were you into drugs at that point? Like pretty heavy or no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Eighty. Yeah. Listen, seventy nine. My mom died. I had already done coke one time. I wasn't happy about it. I was basically a pothead. Gotcha. But my friends went to Zeppelin and all that shit, so acid and mescaline was big when I was mm -hmm. growing up. So And ludes, too. Ludes, Lude, were, oh, ludes were, were everywhere back, back yeah, then. Yeah, those were good things, too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> fucking fun, ludes. They're like unicorns in our generation. Yeah. Oh my we God. only heard stories. Yeah. Your aunt your aunt would get drunk at Thanksgiving. He'd be like, you ever do quaaludes? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> fucking gorilla biscuits and fucking... <laughs> I leave for a lacrosse camp tomorrow. And you know, what people you weren't about? scared of them then. Sure. Like, if you come out with a quaalude, no, 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 no. People are like, it's, listen, it's 5 o'clock on a Friday. You got nothing to do. You got a job, but yeah. you don't really want to go to it tomorrow. Uh -huh. It's $4. Yeah, lewd up. A quaalude is $4 fucking dollars. And it's like drinking 18 fucking beers for the eight <laughs> that you're already going to drink. Okay? So for the $4, when you're fucking 18, what would you rather do? Sure. Pay 6 for a fucking chipping $6 for a case? Or eat f chipping four dollars for a fucking gorilla biscuit, which will take you a lot longer, and you'll have a story in the morning. Because either either you'll pass out. I mean, I got a thousand stories where I just woke up in fucking hallways, freezing with like a hooded sweatshirt on, and people would have said you would have fucking lost a finger. No, I wouldn't. I'm on a quaalude. I'm a, I'm on a real vaccine, not this fucking three month thing. You know, I slept outside one night. It had to be like 18 degrees. I woke up the next day. I had frost on me and shit, but I didn't lose a hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, these kids today would lose a fucking hand. Like, they lost a hand. I, I fell asleep outside. I had quaalude juice in me. I was protected. That's like a bulletproof vest where I That's come like a from. bulletproof fucking vest, you know? Oh, man. Holy shit. Okay. Holy All shit, right. baby. Kip, let's talk about ladder. Ladder. Listen, here's the here's the hard truth. I'll tell you this right now, cue ball. What's that? You don't know when uh, when the big guy's gonna pull your card. You know what I mean? Uh huh. When you're gonna check the fuck out of this hotel. Expire. I'm planning something next week. I think. <laughs> Late checkout. <laughs> But, gang, do yourself a favor. Get over the ladder. Get yourself some term life insurance. You don't want to leave the squad holding the bag when you kick it. Mm -hmm. Make sure everybody's taken care of. Head off to the afterlife with easy peace of mind. <laughs> yeah, don't be a dirtbag for the one time in your life. <laughs> Ladder's 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, yeah. uh, just get your phone or laptop and answer a few quick questions about your health. Ladder's smart algorithms work in real time, so you find out if you're instantly approved. 
you choose. Yep. Uh, so go to ladderlife.com slash garbage a day to see if you're instantly approved. That's ladderlife.com slash garbage, baby. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel any time. You even get a full refund if you cancel within the first 30 days because they're good peoples, baby. Mm-hmm. They got your back. One more time, that's ladderlife.com slash garbage a day. Do it. Yeah, wrap on the gates of hell with a clear conscience. <laughs> Don't be sweating in, our, in, in eternity, will you? Kip, let's talk about aura. Aura, aura, aura. Gang, do you take about a million photos only to leave them on your phone or get them lost in your files? What if you could have all your photos on one gorgeous frame? Mm-hmm. Well, now you can yep. with a connected frame from Aura. Yes. Named the best digital photo frame by Wirecutter, the strategist, and featured in hundreds of gift guides. Aura frames are guaranteed to make mom and grandma smile because you know what's coming up? It's Mother's Day, baby. Don't look like a bozo. Yeah, cram one of these down her throat. Yeah, Tell her shut her up. Zip it. Now you can see the kids. I don't got to come over every week. Yeah. It takes just a few Put minutes. Put some nudes on there for her. <laughs> Get the heart pumping. Tasteful, obviously. It takes just a few minutes to set up for years of enjoyment. Uh, they were nice enough to send us a couple. I got used it at it. the house. Sent it to the bur- I sent it to my mom. I said, bam, shut up. I'll <laughs> ram, this on, ram this down your pipe. All the, and then my sister, I don't have kids, but my sis, I, I sent pics of Hansi over. But the kids, uh, my sister and my brother all uh, dump pictures of the, the little grandkids on there. It's there fantastic. You go. I love it. You invite as many people as you want to add their photos to the frame, and you never know uh, what fun and embar- embarrassing memories you'll have to relive. Mm-hmm. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can save the save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com slash garbage. That's Aura, A-U-R-A, frames.com slash garbage. Use code garbage. You get $30 off plus free shipping on their best-selling Carver frames. There you go. Uh, this deal ends on May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Any vacations growing up? You guys go anywhere? You do anything? Yeah, my mom was big on going to Puerto Rico. Even okay. Even though we're Cuban. Yeah. You know? Okay. I just went for the first time. A Beautiful. Lot of, a lot of Florida. A lot of Florida. When you're Cuban, Miami? Miami. And how are you getting down there? Are you driving down there? You taking, Fuck no. You're Eastern, flying. Eastern Airlines. The wings of man, bitch. Puerto Rico I flew, and then my mom put me on a plane when I was 10 to L.A. to go see my uncle. Okay. So, you know, when you were 10 then. like By you, yourself? Fuck yeah. <laughs> my mom didn't have time to dick around and go to Disneyland. The Mets are playing, bitch. The she's Mets got, home next She's weekend. got money on the game. I got, yeah, a I got right. money on the fucking game. I got no time for fucking Disneyland with bullshit. See some fucking Disneyland. I don't want to see no Mickey Mouse. Let's go to the Met game. Let's throw some fucking chicken wings at Rusty Stop and left field. And let's have a good fucking time. My mom wasn't a Disneyland or Sea World. Yeah. No, for sure. I so it. you'd fly out there, your uncle would pick you up at the airport. Pick me up at the airport. That's old school shit. They don't at do that now. 10 years old. Ten. Don't do that now. You get arrested. They, they, don't they do it now. You got to pay 18000 Sure. <laughs> you got to pay a fee and put that kid in first class. Yeah. And he gets treated like shit. They don't give you no wings. They don't give you no pilot <laughs> he hat. He don't get to land the plane. Nothing. And they, you can't get off the plane till the end. Oh. So they make you sit there like a bumpy because I flew with a kid once next to me. That's not that's not great. I sat sure. down and there's like a 12 year old girl in like, first class as an adult. Yeah, oh, what I'm like, the I'm fuck? Fucking, I would. This had to have be, to change my seat. This is great. This had to be about six years ago. She sat. I I just yeah, 12 years old. I'm going to jail. Mm-hmm. So I just looked straight ahead. I didn't do anything. And then she asked me. She goes, I have a lot of anxiety. You ever had a Quaalude? Okay, no, I was. <laughs> she's fucking 12. Don't put me under the goddamn jail. Could you imagine that? Like if somebody says, like, Joey Diaz asked my daughter if she had a Quaalude. They'll throw you under the jail. Hey, today. Touch, you got any lemons on you? Yeah, you got What's any lemons deal? on you? Or the Aurora 714 Express. <laughs> Man, uh, you know you lived a, a, a peppered life when you can quote out the pill numbers. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, but you, I figured you would be good guidance for a young kids. You, 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 you went through it when it was when it was much rougher. Yes, you know. But she came to me and she goes, "I have anxiety. I don't know." She goes, "Can you keep your eye on me?" And I was like, "Then I spoke to her a little bit about anxiety. I have anxiety." Sure. Mm-hmm. And then she was great. And then we landed, and I get off the plane, and there's a fucking dude who's not happy. I could tell he's powerful. I didn't know. You know, he was with his wife, and they're like, why can't I see my daughter? Shit. Why can't I? And I finally walked 10 steps, and I go, let me go back. And I went back, and I go, hey, man, excuse me. You don't know me. Your daughter's fine. I sat next to her in first class. She's fine. She had a little bit of anxiety, but that was it. We spoke about it, 
And he goes, thank you very much. Oh, look at yeah. that. Yeah. You're you the know, kind of guy Uncle I want to be sitting next you know, to. I have anxiety. I didn't find out till the next day till they sent me a message. It was Eminem's manager. No, oh, no shit. way. And then he sent me you, anything you need. It, reach out to me. My daughter said you were a gentleman. Blah 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 blah. Oh, blah. Look at that, Uncle so Joey. So it all worked the Uncle fuck Joey. out. Uncle Joey, that's you the go. guy you want to play. You put him under his wing. Oh yeah. Be, yeah, yeah. But in today's world, you don't want to talk to a twelve-year-old. So. <laughs> no, of course. I remember when my daughter was first born. I went to a five-year-old girl's house. We were all there, all the parents, and I'm sitting there with my daughter and the little girls. Little girl turned around, came up to me, thank God, in front of my wife and her mother. She goes, Uncle Joey, my squeegee hurts. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> why are you telling me this? Like, that's fucking uncomfortable. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to go get a hamburger. Yeah. yeah. My squeegee hurts. Well, why would it hurt? What are you telling me this for? <laughs> my wife was like, what? I don't know. Fucking yeah, if I was a scared little kid and I got on a plane and I saw you there, I would be, I would be reassured. I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I, I... I feel comfortable listen, sitting next I to him now. Yeah, I was a scared little kid. Me too. Who Me was too. So, I'm a scared little man right yeah. now. So I just turned the voice down a little bit. I mm -hmm. just told them that I had it too, and I just talked to her, spoke to her about breathe, mm -hmm. you know, ask yourself why you have this fear. Stop, keep breathing, and ask yourself. And she was like, it's working, thank you. So she oh, was very great, nice, man. man. Fucking stand-up guy. Fucking love it. <laughs> All Excellent. right. So, Florida, do you ever do Jersey Shore or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, where'd you go? Uh, all of them, because you graduate. You yeah, to, sure. When you're 13, you go to Kingsburg first, and then people are like, why you went to Kingsburg? That's a dump. Okay. Then they take you to, like, Seaside, then Seaside Park. Uh -huh. Then when you get into Gorilla Biscuits, that's when you go to Manasquan. Uh -huh. But the ultimate bar was Belmar, Montego Bay. Yeah, and I know was, Belmar. And it was before 12... You could, all right, so it opened at 12, <laughs> and that a little peep went on the beach, like, doo, doo, and it was, they had a special on Red Devils. It's an Alabama slammer and, and a fucking New York Long Island iced tea put together. Mix that with a Quaalude, forget about it. I'll never forget going in there one night. You wake My up in the buddy fall. was so fucked up on a Quaalude. Yeah, wake up on Labor Day. He was just dancing with one shoe on. <laughs> and I'm like, you're missing your shoe. He's like, what? And if you went in there before six with your bathing suit, you could stay with your bathing suit on. Mm -hmm. So you could rub up against the girls. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crazy. Get a little friction going. Fucking crazy. An Alabama slammer. Holy you know, oh, shit. Oh, Alabama slammer. So Seaside. Okay. Then you graduate. And then I left in 84. Okay. So I didn't really know what was going on uh, after that. That's good. What was Christmas like as a kid? Would you guys do, uh, would you do a tree? Yeah. I remember Christmas early on, but the most memorable Christmas I had was I still lived on 88th Street, and I was with them all night at the bar. Now, I didn't tell them I didn't believe in Santa. You know, when you go up to 148th Street, the kids straighten you right the fuck up oh, yeah. about life. They don't yeah, give yeah. a fuck about your A 12-year-old up there is 42. Well, yeah, a 12-year-old yeah. is 30. <laughs> yeah, they don't they, fuck around. They, the first time you're like, hi, I can't wait to see Santa. They're like, they ain't no Santa, nah, kid. Nah. The Dominican straighten you out <laughs> yeah, real quick. Yeah, in my house, he's Hector. Okay? <laughs> There's no fucking Santa. There's no fucking Santa. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the things in the book that the first time I went to 148th Street, my god was like, you got to go outside and play with the kids. All right, and I started playing, you know, there was some fucking Irish dirty kids, and some <laughs> fucking Puerto Rican kids, and some white kids, German, whatever the fuck they were, a couple Jewish kids. And I, I wasn't there an hour, and they're like, hey, you want to come play? And I'm like, yeah, we played like stickball or whatever. And then they're like, let's go down to West Side Highway, because we were right there. We were uh, 148th and Broadway, so mm -hmm. all you got to do is walk down the hill. It's right there. And you're right there. And I remember like, they're like, we walk in, do you want to see a dead body? And I remember the dude Jesus. was already like bloated and he had like a two, like a four by eight piece of plywood on him. This is before New York CSI. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is yeah. when you sat there until you sat there. Yeah. <laughs> unless, you're on a, unless you're bothering somebody on Broadway <laughs> or in front of the fucking Lincoln Center, they're not coming for you. When they fucking shot you back, I don't know if he was shot. I remember we walked and I, I till this day, I remember the, the smell. Smell. The smell was fucking thick. Man. It wasn't asthma that killed him. No, no, yeah, no it wasn't it natural was, causes. I don't think I hit in the head with a rock. I, I don't know what happened to him. He was just laying there with shorts on and a fucking piece of plywood on him. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm good. That's good. But that was that was a kid's world. Yeah, that was a New York. I mean, that was a kid's world. It was, New, it was a different New York back. I mean, I didn't Christ. know it, but 
different, way different than now. Huh, okay, any pets growing up? Yeah, I had uh, My mother was a German Shepherd whore. Really? Okay. So she would donate money to the ass piece of the cops or something. Okay. That was our first dog, German Shepherd. Yeah, and they would give her, like, the old dog. Oh, money. no shit. The ones that couldn't sniff drugs no more, like, when they're <laughs> fucking... When they got too much asthma, or sleep apnea, or whatever. <laughs> so we had a couple German Shepherds, Champion. Okay. And there was another one I forget. And then I got a dog about maybe six months before my mother died. And then when my mother died, the Italian house I went to, they didn't like dogs. They already had a dog. So okay. I had to give the dog away. And I still remember nights being fucked up and walking home and going, I got to go see that dog. And I would jump to people's fence and just go into the doghouse with the dog and just cry. Oh, oh shit! Just missing Damn. my mother and this fucking dog. Damn! I was doing THC crystal back then, <laughs> which is called, which is so a, there might not have been a dog. No, no, there was a dog, which was, which was AKA Angel Dust. Sure, know? sure, AKA. So we liked Angel doing Dust. this shit every Sunday. We would do a ten dollar bag from the city of Angel Dust. So when I got the dog, I ended up calling Crystal. Okay. He was he was white with a couple like little black marks. <laughs> sure, uh-huh. sure. He looks like Crystal, so I called the Crystal, and then after that. Then I got dogs later on. Okay. Gotcha. No snakes, anything like that? Lizards, no. birds, nothing? Turtles, no. nothing? No, no, no. Fuck that. Okay. Huh. When you were in school, would you bring a lunch or would, you, would your mom pack you one? What would you do? Early on, uh, you know, when I got here from Cuba, I wanted to be an American. Okay. And my life was Dick Van Dyke. Okay. And fucking. Dick Van Dyke show with Mary Tyler Moore? Yeah. And right? Sad Bread Hot Dog. Okay. Oh, and in my man. mind, I believed that the more hot dogs I ate, the more American I would get in a rush. It was like a speed to be an <laughs> like American. Like you had to hit a number and you right. got your green card yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 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 your yeah, green yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. At 250, you get your green card. Big yeah. fan of the Sabrettes. Big fan. The best. Big fan. Big fan. So, they don't even have them in the city really anymore. It's just the umbrellas. It's bullshit. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah they don't you use you the buy Sabrettes. Those umbrellas. You can get them out at the, at the factory out in Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I got them at the house. Oh, they're great. I got them I'm coming the over. With yeah. the onions. Do you get the onions? Great. And shit. I love their chili sauce. Oh, I love the chili it's sauce. It's so good. And the red dope, onions are unbelievable. And you get the chili sauce and cut little jalapenos and dope it up even more. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> oh, Lordy. You don't know what's fucking up that asshole. If it's the hot dogs or the fucking hollies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say would be the best way to cook a hot dog? How do you do them at the house? At the house? If I tell you, you'll be mad at me. No. no. I no. fry Wait those it. motherfuckers with raw onions in them. On a pan. On a pan. I, okay. I like fried. I like, right. listen, I like my hot dogs all types. <laughs> Let's interject real quick. Yeah. Please. And this is how much I like hot dogs. <laughs> Okay. If there's anybody ever built for the show, yeah. it's Joey. Like I have, to, I have to resist. Joey, we might be related. I'm <laughs> telling you right now. I have to resist getting hot dog. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. Uh-huh. I could, there's a place in Seaside Park that I wa- walked into one day, and they had a special. Mm-hmm. Ten hot dogs for 20 bucks. So I'm out 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I went for the 10 first. Okay. <laughs> and that's scary that you could eat 10 fucking hot dogs. I'll put a pack chili. down. I can put it back. These no guys thing. make fun of me all the time. When I was a kid, I was born in upstate Pennsylvania. We had this place called Abe's Hot Dogs, and we'd always get them, and we'd get them by the dozen. And we would def- we would eat like three, four hot dogs. Yeah. It's just the best. So you, you didn't have one hot dog. When you're making them, no, never one. No. You, they, yours were chili dogs, and you ate. You said they only sold them by the dozen, and we found out you can buy one chili dog. If you're an, you an, were just if you're an 12, asshole. You were just eating 12 chili dogs <laughs> when we were in a weight loss challenge, so that's why we were a little upset. We got to go for hot dogs once. Yeah. There's a place uh, in Newark. Yeah. There's a place in Clifton, maybe. It's called Hank's Franks. Ooh. Okay. You buy Sounds eight hot good. dogs, you get one free, and they... You get potatoes on your hot dogs and onions Ooh. and shit. Come on now. You shit blood for a month, but it's <laughs> fucking worth it. <laughs> it's better to eat that fucking hummus, okay? I'd rather right. eat 20 hot dogs than a fucking piece of hummus and support fucking ISIS and God knows what else. All right? That's why you haven't seen ISIS. They've been laying low. Yeah. Getting that every, bank. Getting pumping, that hummus fucking money. hummus in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pumping it. Pumping it, bitch. <laughs> I'm a hummus man. I like a little hummus. I do, but I mean, Joey's converted me to You're from Philly, dog. dog. No more hummus. (laughs) (laughs) You're from Philly. Come on, guys. Your parents know about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from Philly. There's a certain fucking respect I have always had for Philadelphia. It's a Philly, New York, and Boston. No, 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 no. I love Boston. I love New York City and what it stands for. When New York City fucking 
sneezes, every other motherfucker catches a cold. And mm-hmm. you better fucking remember that now, cocksuckers. <laughs> yeah. Don't get too well. It's happening in Sacramento. Listen, <laughs> New York City's the way to fucking go. Still, okay? still, always will be. What were we talking about? <sighs> Philly. Philly. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about hot dogs. <laughs> I went to, I got back. I got back here three years ago. And I was a little fucked up for a year. I did the knee surgery. I was having some problems. And Jimmy Florentine goes, I got sick tickets for the Philly game against mm-hmm. uh, the Giants. Do you want to go? And I'm like, absolutely. I pulled my daughter aside, who at the time was nine. I go, listen, doll, I love you to death. But where we're going, you're going to hear things yeah, sure. you've never heard <laughs> sure. before. Okay? And forgive. They're cool people. They're dynamite people. Trust me, I'm telling you this. Just... We get there. We're not even in the stadium. My daughter hits me. She goes, look, Dad, there was already a dick on the wall with balls <laughs> right when you walked sure, in. Of course. It, for some people, they go, oh, my God. For me, I'm like, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good. I'm fucking home. Yeah. Start tearing up. I walked down. I had, we had great tickets, Jimmy and I, fucking people yelling, shut the fuck up. The coach from San Francisco wouldn't come out. Because I guess he coached Philadelphia yeah, years he, ago. Yeah, he coached. Jesus, coached every time that guy walked out. The things oh, sure. yeah. you heard. Yeah. Again, I love Philadelphia. Sometimes it's overkill. Sure. But in my world, where I came from, uh-huh. I like it because yeah. Philadelphia don't like the same shit. I don't fuck. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you and that's Amish, me? motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, it's very tame Different. now. Back when we were a kid, going what? to going to, ve- <laughs> going to veteran stadium. Oh, oh yeah, veteran yeah, stadium. Was, no, was no. Nuts. no, listen, nuts. no bueno. Yeah, no bueno. Seven hundred level. <laughs> no bueno. Been... Oh. Remember, I went to Glassboro. Okay, before it became Rowan. Cocksuckers. Okay, that's how old the Morelic yeah, Papa yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I still remember the Sixer games when they would give you a free hamburger if they scored over 125 <laughs> points. And if you Shout had, out to the spectrum. If you had balls, go cop that burger. Because yeah. you got the free ticket, yeah. and you got to walk in there, walking out with that burger. <laughs> Another story. With something compl- I saw a guy get hit with a pipe when I was younger down there. And I'm like, Philadelphia. They don't I, know, I went to around. see the Stones with, uh, I went to see the Stones with Foreigner. And veterans in 1978. Damn. Jesus. I was there when Julius cupped the ball against the uh, Lakers getting one. Get the fuck out of here, really? Getting one. I saw the Daily News. I was a, I was working for a bookie on 118th Street. Okay. I took the fuck. There was no ferry then. So I had to take the bus up fucking bu- uh, Boulevard East. And I, you know, you had the Daily News. That's what, when you get into the city, you buy Daily News. <laughs> daily News and the fucking sad bread. That's uh-huh, what you're doing. Sure. Wherever you got to go, you read the Daily News. And I'll never forget that scene. Philly was getting a point at home. And I was like, these motherfuckers forget. About a year earlier, didn't Dallas go into San Francisco and try to give my man Snowy Joey a point? And what did that motherfucker do? He threw, he turned the lights off with Clark. That was my functioning. Uh Who the fuck are you to come into Philly? (laughs) Fuck Kareem. Fuck Magic. That's when we had Moses, bitch. We had World Be Free. We had a fucking stack team. Cordwell Jones, whatever. Dr. J, Bobby baby. Jones, Julius Irving. It was a different fucking world, man. Okay, let's talk about rocket money, baby. Rocket money. Let's talk about rocket money saving you money mm-hmm. because we're all signed up to all these subscriptions that we thought we canceled that we don't know about. Meanwhile, it's coming out of your checking account, and then something hits, and then you're overdrawn. Now you're jammed up. Most people think that they drop about 80 bucks a month on subscriptions. It's actually about 200 With rocket money, they go through it, tell you exactly what you got subscribed up to. They can cancel it for you right then and there. Boom. I, I know. I signed up. They were good enough. They gave us a nice little promo code to sign up check it out you know what i mean i didn't realize i was signed up for dildo of the month club <laughs> <laughs> they were taking 14 dollars a month out of my goddamn pocket and not making with the dildos i know uh <laughs> if you're sending the equipment <laughs> all right uh, yeah uh quickly and easily view all your subscription and cancel any t- anyone you don't want with just touch of a button they take care of the rest for you rocket money even puts uh your expenses into categories and alerts you if anything looks off and budgeting is uh, is in easy mode, baby. Um, those five dollar charges you think ah oh, this that 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 adds up after a while. Jam you up. Keep it in your pocket. Don't even let them get their greedy little hands on it. Stop throwing away. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to RocketMoney.com/garbage. That's RocketMoney.com/garbage. RocketMoney.com/garbage. Do it. Yeah. 
It's I remember a different world. being a little suburban kid and going down to the vet for the first time in the eighties. That was a fucking eye opener. Oh yeah, that was an, an eye, eye opener. opener. You held your dad's hand real fucking oh. tight. Petrified. You saw a fist fight or something? You're like, Dad, get closer to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah, ain't yeah. working out. Petrified. It was. It was a different. Yeah, that that veteran stadium. Even I mean, I, I would go in the '90s. It was fucking wait. You know, it was a fuck. They had a jail cell and a judge in there to process you. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. People don't believe that. Yeah. Like uh, people outside, you know, California. People don't believe that. No. But like, I also view people every to everywhere you go. They're like, "Oh, Philly fans, Philly is," the and I'm just used to it. So I'm like, I don't know. But then, as I've been removed, I've been up here for ten years. I go back. I'm like, oh yeah, no, it is fucking. Yeah, but let me ask rough. you a question. I love it. I would rather go see a game in Philly. Oh yeah. Than anywhere else anymore. Oh, we yeah. were at the World Series game three, first no, game back didn't. in Philly. Yep. When, when Harper, when when they were just crushing. 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 Right, crushing. They, were, they were landing right in our fucking. We were out in right field back. right behind Castellanos. Harper hit that first bomb. Let me tell you, it was like money ball. It yeah. was magic. The place went fucking It was nuts. magic. Everybody's got everybody in a headlock, beer. It's fine. Then they got live, shut out the next night. They live for that shit. <laughs> yeah. They live for they that live, shit. They live. It's the whole life. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They live for that shit. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And, bro, I grew up at the Garden, seeing Bernard King. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to see the Garden to see fucking Walt. I went Magic. all that shit. It was fucking, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a game from the Garden. I was watching. I'm like, motherfuckers will never know what that's like. Mm-hmm. A Tuesday night in New York City? Shit. Yeah. yeah. The Knicks are at home. Mm-hmm. I remember, now it's 400 a ticket. But when I was Crazy. here, we'd just be hanging out. What are you guys doing tonight? Go to fucking Nick game. Mm-hmm. Go get a cheesesteak and we'll shoot up and get the Nick game. We'll smoke yeah. a joint on the way, get a six pack. Whatever. That's how. Man, that's, that's how easy it life. was. Joint six pack in a ball. That's game? how. And you walk. You got off the port authority and you walked to the garden smoking. Mm-hmm. And people look at you with a fucking ghetto blaster, ACDC, highway to hell. Mm-hmm. You know, people <laughs> like these fucking kids. They got the, <laughs> these kids came to play. They're on their own planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. All right. It. So we talked about hot dog. How do you get your steak cooked? Joe, how do you like your steak? Medium well. Medium well? Medium well. Ooh, really? Yikes. A little pink, but I, I can't have all that fucking pink. But, yeah. Really? I like roast beef, but like when they give you too much pink, it just drives me crazy. No okay. kidding. Hey. Yeah. So you won't, do, you won't do like tartare or anything like that, will you? Like steak tartare? I'll try it. What about oysters? Will you have raw oysters? Yeah. Sushi? I like oysters, clams, oysters. Really? Okay. Clams on a half shell like a motherfucker. <laughs> With some horseradish? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uncle Joey, how do you feel about hibachi restaurants? Tremendous. I got a great <laughs> one in my neighborhood. Really? Great one. Yeah. Okay. And they double. Listen, I don't like going to restaurants when they have two flags. You got to pick a flag with me. Do you Chinese? Oh, so you'll. Okay. So if they have an American flag and a Chinese if flag, you're you don't Chinese, like... I don't want to see sushi in your restaurant. Don't ah, embarrass me. Okay. okay. Let's All work right. on the lobster Cantonese. You're a... <laughs> okay? But if you're going to make sushi too, it's the law of diminishing returns. You're, you're going right. to slip somewhere. Yeah. So I always. I'm a f- fucking I got idiot. If you go Japanese, to... you want Japanese. If you go Chinese, you want Chinese. We do Korean barbecue? Yeah. Not yeah, bad. But by my right. house, they have a Japanese place and they do pad thai shrimp. Okay. Oh, good, good perfect. stuff. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Jersey's I used to go got to, great food. I used to go to Toy in L.A. That was right down the corner from me. The only thing I didn't like is they have coconut milk and people were barefoot. Those granola motherfuckers <laughs> in L.A. Their feet smell like death. You know, all that yoga and all uh-huh. that rotten ass and all yeah. that turmeric and shit. Oh, yeah. They're in there Natural eating deodorant. And yeah, shit like you're that. fucking eating pad thai shrimp. You think you're under the fucking Hudson? <laughs> You know, oh yeah, those fucking filthy Gentiles. They'll, they'll fucking, <laughs> you know. Gentiles. You, you know. in Los Angeles must have been a war every oh, single day of your you life. You must have bro. woke up and oh. been like, we're, we're going to battle. You know, it's so weird. How, it's so weird how I just could not, I cannot believe I lasted 23 years. And at some point I would just shut people out. Like, I don't want to hear this shit. Yeah. Too much talking. Too much, oh, man, shut the fuck up. Either you're going to get on stage or you're not. Uh-huh. That's it, right or wrong? What's yeah, the, of course. Well, I thought that I would write this material and then live through it. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Just get up and be job. funny. Yeah. All this shit for nothing. Just get up there. Yeah. What the fuck is all this shit? Jesus. Now well, you, you, was, said, you said you said you're not you're not that big of a fan of flying, but when you do fly, are you up front? Fly up front. I'll fly wherever they put me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you try to fly up. You know, you sat in the back. You've done it you all. You did it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a club, listen, a club gives you like 600 for a plane ticket. 
Okay. If I go online, the plane tickets eight hundred. For an extra one fifty, I get to live like a doctor. Sure. Yeah. I get to scratch my balls in first class. Mm-hmm. But the only first class I was really, really in love with, the best I think is JetBlue. Okay. Oh, the what is it? The mint or whatever. The mint. Yeah. Oh, by That's, yourself. Your pod. You're in the pod. You're in the pod. Yeah. By your little office. You're will hanging you take, out. Will you take your shoes off on a plane? I love people, so no. Okay. Okay. I don't want okay. them smelling my fun guy fucking <laughs> toenail. Will you drop the seat back? Yeah. 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 Okay. You TSA pre-check? No, I'm. I got felonies. I'm. Uh, I'm clear. <laughs> <laughs> But every once in a while, they fuck up, and they give me pre-check, and I'm like, ah. Later. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, you brush your teeth in the shower? Yes and no. Okay. I have, like, two places, like, in the shower, and then I have the sink full. You, know, you got to go in there three times a day, so you can't keep going back in the shower. You can't be hopping in the so shower. So I have a toothbrush in my shower, in my bathroom, one downstairs in the basement. You leave it in the shower? One in the shower. Will you yeah. pee in the shower? I used to. I used to shit in the shower, too, for a while. <laughs> A nice little dump in there. You pick it up with your hand and just flip it in the toilet in the morning. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. But that was a long time ago. That was when I was, was still like an animal. Ago. Oh, that's a first. <laughs> yeah. I was here on the program, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you want the truth? I got to give it to you. Uh, of course. And we appreciate <laughs> that, Joe. <laughs> Make me come over a ferry to come in and blow lies at you and shit. Cocksucker. If I got on that ferry, I'm going to make it worth our while. <laughs> Have a good time Shit. with you guys. Uh, <laughs> we love you, Joe. Uh, say you're out to, you're out at a at for dinner with a couple of friends, and it's someone's birthday. Will you tell the waiter it's someone's birthday so you get the free cake? No, no, never. I don't want that motherfucker coming to my table. <laughs> okay, with that firecracker. And they're singing. Oh, he's a jolly. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he's a jolly. Get yeah, get the fuck out of here. I just had a 60th birthday, uh, happy and my birthday. friends were furious. Like you gotta have something. I'm like, guys, I'm not doing that shit. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I got all my neighbors to bring their kids over. And we <laughs> fucking made pizzas. Hang and out. There you go. And the kids had a great time. We listened to music. The parents got hammered. And uh, I had the energy of the kids there. We got, I got too many kids in my neighborhood for me to tell you I'm coming over without the kids. I can't do that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. somebody sent me an invite for dinner last week. Like, oh, yeah, no kids. I got, I got too, I'm too invested. Mm-hmm. Sure. And my daughter, we're just there. I don't really have a babysitter all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So, no. Nah, makes sense. I like kids. Okay. What about, how do you feel about splitting the check when you go out to eat? I'd rather pay it just so I don't have to fucking see calculators and shit <laughs> sure. come out and percentages uh-huh. and who drank the wine. Oh, you didn't drink. Oh, listen. Just give me the fucking check because yeah. you're embarrassed. Get the fuck out of here. I know. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's, it's so like embarrassing. Uh, I like uh, pay it if I don't have it just to get the conversation over The with. best is in L.A. when they invite you. When they go, hey, it's, his, it's Chuck's birthday Tuesday. Do you want to wait till you go? There's 18 motherfuckers at the table. Too much for me because mm-hmm. I just want to talk to you wanna, and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's 18 motherfuckers interjecting in our stories and then wait for the check to come. Then nobody knows nothing. <laughs> you know, everybody's home. Oh, what happened? I think, you know, because all they're talking about is, I can't wait to travel to India. You know, you're not going anywhere anyway. Yeah, check comes, mom's the fucking The check fucking comes, word. mom. You know, yeah, everybody's yeah, looking yeah, the other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. All I got you is know, rupees. Yeah, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what do you like to lay down on a tip? You like, you, you, you a good tipper? Yes. Good tipper? You have to. Okay. You a Listen, cash man, gentleman? We're, we're entertainers. Yeah. yeah. Better yet, we're in the art business. Better yet, we're really in the karma business. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay, that just hit mu- me. We're pretty much in the karma business. So look at the book. Look what it says on the bottom of that book. It says Joey Coco Diaz and underneath. It's Erica Florentine. Erica Florentine is Jimmy's niece. Okay. She can't figure out, like, why did you put me on the book? Why did mm-hmm. you do this? And I go, when you're a real artist, you look for people to strive. Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm going to tell you who I learned this lesson from. Guy just got $200 million. Guy just got $200 million because he never felt short on us, any of his friends. Mm-hmm. You know, he was always there for us. He was making money since day one. So don't think that $200, $200 million ever changed that. He sure. was making money. But the support that you get from big time names, and you see that. I mean, you first get into the business, you're like, oh, I don't like this guy, or fuck him, he's moving faster mm-hmm. than me. That's going to stunt your growth. It does. The more you cheer for these two motherfuckers, the bigger you'll be. 
-hmm. because you're cheering. You want the best for everybody around you. And it comes down to tipping. It comes down to kids. Yeah. You know, tipping. Listen, I'm going to sit here with you and tell you about bad. As far as I'm concerned, it's all bad service. You know why? Because they're not licking my ball sack. <laughs> okay? When you, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's be honest. What's good service? Yeah. They licked my ball sack after I had the flan and the double espresso. Okay? <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh huh. But you know it's what? It's a great you, dessert, by the way. You're making it. Is. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're making that person's uh -huh. day. Yeah. I always say that. All I got to do is one thing every day, mm -hmm. is make somebody's day. Damn. Does that mean you have to give them $10 million? No, that means, bro, I like that shirt. Really? I like you, Joey. My wife hates it. Fuck your fucking wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's two nice things. You make, you make somebody's day. Of course. Gotcha. Whether it's buying them a sad bread dog. What's it cost you, $3? Yeah. What's it cost you to take a guy on the road that, you know, he's, you know when a comic's down. Sure. I don't have to tell you that. You have two good weeks, and then you have three bad weeks. Mm -hmm. This guy don't want to use you. Netflix don't want to shoot me. Fuck all that. Let's go to let's fucking go. Boston. Let's, let's go do it together. Dope, let's go do it together. And let's see what the fuck's going on here. And people never understood that. Everybody's yeah. done challenging everybody. Yeah. That's not the way you're going to grow. You're going <laughs> to grow by clapping for that motherfucker. Completely agree. You know, there's a thousand comics I don't like personally, but God damn it, are they fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me? Yeah, 100%. So I'm still going to support them. Maybe I don't like what they do. And guess what? Maybe they don't like what I do. But they got to go, that motherfucker could tell a good story. And that's what this is basically about. We're in the karma business, no. guys. Damn. That's all right. Fucking changing lives out here, Damn. old Joey. We're in the karma business, yeah. motherfuckers. I, 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 be, I become a better tipper. I didn't have money for so long. No. Struggle, and now I got cash. I'll go, oh, I'm, I'm making up. So, like, the guys that are getting it now are getting it for the, for the 10 guys but I couldn't even, give it to. There was a time when even forward. if I didn't have money, I wouldn't go in that restaurant. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah if I couldn't give him $3, mm -hmm. you know what? Don't go in there. Sure. You're not yeah, you can't stiff a guy. You're not going to stiff a no, fucking never, guy. So. Never. Hmm. Damn. Using any cologne? You wear cologne? Fuck no. No? <laughs> Irish Spring, bitch. Yeah, shout out to the Irish Spring. Irish Spring. Still doing a bar? Question. A bar or so? Fuck yeah. Are you Give bar on jelly. skin? Uh, I used to be more. Like now, she, my wife buys like the loofahs. And the shit. loofah. I like the loofahs. <laughs> I, I cut a little loofah for your asshole because you know, around the sides you get that little barnacles and shit mm -hmm. to yeah. stay on there so you loofing yeah. that little muffler yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm making little, my own muscles that's why down I there. keep the fucking toothbrush in it's on the other side of the toothbrush <laughs> yeah, just Irish spring and the stickiest of the icky yeah. yeah oh I love that shit I love Irish spring I'm white trash guys yeah. you forget I'm Cuban yeah. but I'm white trash <laughs> you know, I tell my wife all the time I go don't feel bad I'm white trash too you're making Cuban <laughs> sandwiches of Wonder Bread <laughs> oh no not that white trash <laughs> But I have my, I love all this shit. He over and hit you? Yeah, I love all I that shit. I apologize on behalf. I apologize. I didn't know he was going to say that. No, no. <laughs> I am white trash, brother. Uh, have you ever skied in jeans? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Jersey, what are you going to do? It's true. You have any bumper stickers on the car now? No. Okay. How do you feel about the rotisserie chicken? <laughs> It's kind of boring now. Okay. It used to be better than everybody. You know, Boston Market did it. And they had a good fucking oh, thing. They, they had a good thing. They had a run, 30 baby. 30 years ago, they it had was a Boston run. Chicken. run. It Boston used to be chicken. Boston yes. Chicken. And they, they threw down Boston They threw chicken. down. Then ShopRite got into it. Everybody got into it. <laughs> sure. And now you're getting these third world fucking chickens that taste like fucking ass. Okay? You know, it's like the sandwich. Remember Miss, <laughs> Mr. Manicani made you a sandwich <laughs> in Philadelphia. And it was a great fucking sandwich for $3. But that, no, that, then there's got to be Subway. And so you're not going to go into Subway, but they fuck it up for everybody else. They do. The, the products change. So Mr. Manicotti now, you know, now you got people going in there, hi, Mr. Manicotti, can I get a turkey on white? Come here for a second. <laughs> do I look like I make turkey on white? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Where are you shopping now over in Jersey? What's your grocery store over there? I got three different ones. I got really? Wegmans, Lay it on us. Okay. ShopRite, Wegmans. and Lavodis. Okay. Ooh. Where are you That's getting your lunch meat from? Lavodis. Is that meal. a smaller Lavodi? It's yeah. more of like a it's local an Italian, market. Italian market. market. You go there for the specialty items. Yeah, the go in there and get a little fucking mortadelle mm -hmm. with a little fucking wet mutz. Yeah, you do. Okay. Get a little yeah, piece yeah. of bread. They got uh, Gino's Italian ice in that motherfucker. Shout out to Gino's. They also got, I can't support them because they don't support cops, Ben and Jerry's New York Super Fudge Chunk. <laughs> I love that motherfucker. That's a, that's a game changer. If you want diabetes, there you go. Yeah. Ben and Jerry's. They'll do it. 
I'm a chubby hubby man. Yeah. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and what cold cuts? What 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 regular cold cuts are you doing? You do turkey? You do ham? I'm a deluxe. Boar's head deluxe ham. Gentlemen. Sliced Boar's thin. head is the best. Of course. Sliced thin. Will you take the slice off the guy when he slices you, you it? You bet, like a motherfucker. <laughs> you bet. I'm a Costco groupie, bitch. I love that shit. I know what it is to be poor on a Saturday and go to Costco and mingle. Couple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to Costco to mingle. You're treating it like it's a wine tasting. Yeah, I don't have no money to buy anything. <laughs> Dude, I'll go down there shopping. and mingle. Do you want a piece of halibut? Oh, um, I shouldn't. I should <laughs> You got 40 toothpicks in your pocket? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> who's cutting the hair these days? Where do you get the hair cut? Well, I'm 60. My hair cuts itself at this point. I'm, okay. just, I'm just losing it, it just by meant- the day. You know what I'm saying? So it cuts itself. But I have a girl that uh, I've been using in Jersey. Great lady. I know her family. Okay. Her father is the gym I go to. Okay. You go to her? She come to you? I go to her. You go to her. She I do go. it at the house or she got a spot? No, she got a shop. Great okay. shop. Okay. I love the girls. What's she getting there. you for a cut over there? How much does the cut cost? Again, I don't even know. She just gives me a number and I give really? her a tip. Because yeah. she, I know she takes care of me on it. Mm-hmm. I go in there for the dye, the cut. Gotcha. Yeah, you do it all up. You get the whole thing the done. The fucking nose hairs. The mm-hmm. fucking sure. Clean you up real sure. nice. Right. Yeah. I just started getting the nose hair and the ear hair done when I go in. Yeah, yeah you, you get to that to. age. We get you got to. You get to that age. It mm-hmm. just blows out you. Um, hmm. let's say you're going to a wedding, uh, family, friend, their kid. Um, what are we talking about in the envelope? What are we looking at? I assume you're a cash gift guy. You're not getting yeah. something off the registry. No, no. I'm not giving them a fucking blender like a no. Momo. Well, let's get something straight. I give everybody from three to a nickel, but I okay. don't nice. go to the wedding. <laughs> you don't. That is the most bullshit I've ever heard. I will pay you 500 not to go to your wedding. <laughs> I'm like Brad Pitt in Moneyball when he's talking to that dude, yeah. and he goes, "The Yankees are paying you not to play." Yeah, you know, I'm I David don't Justice. Listen, yeah, you go to so many weddings, and they're a whole fucking day. It's three, a lot. Two days. I just don't have three it. to a nickel. Listen, I just don't have it. You know. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, 15 years ago, something started in this country where it really turned me off. And it's the people who think, again, it's a special day for you, and I'm there with you. But what makes you think? I got to fly to Texas to celebrate your birthday. You ain't wrong. Got you. Or to Mexico. And I got one invite. Let me tell you what this invite was about. And I'll tell you the background. I know we want a shortage. I knew the girl. She was a sweet girl. Mm-hmm. I've known, we lived in the building. But what pissed me off was she got a pair of fake tits that looked fantastic. I never saw them, but <laughs> she was a skinny girl and the tits looked great. And she got engaged two months after she got the tits. She didn't even fucking wait to see where her investment was going to take her. <laughs> Nobody ever came on her tits. Nobody fucking jizzed. Nobody did anything. <laughs> so for you to get married, okay, <laughs> when I got the invite. But this young lady decided to get married January 1st. Ooh. And she wanted you there t- December 26th for the festivities. Let That's me tell you crazy. something. crazy. Get out of here. Fuck <laughs> you. Who the fuck are you? To get married in Mexico. First of all, I knew you when you were sucking dick behind White Castle. Okay? I knew all those broads when they were giving hand jobs behind White Castle or Burger King or McDonald's. Now I got to fly to Mexico. No. That's never going to. I will never At Christmas. contribute to that. At Christmas I will time, never, nonetheless. I will never contribute to that. Okay. Because I, I don't want people to keep thinking they can get away with that. <laughs> get married at the VFW like every other dirty fucking whore does. Okay? I knew you when you were blowing dudes, and now all of a sudden you want to get married because your husband bought you a Range Rover. It's like the other day, some lady tried to cut me off with a Mercedes Benz. She didn't know what she was doing. And she tried to cut me off. She didn't. No, she didn't really know what she was doing. She tried to cut. I was already in place, and she's trying to muscle in on me. And I opened the car, and I told her something that's as simple as can be, okay? Sucking dick and driving are two different skills. Just because your husband bought you a $100,000 car because you suck a good dick, you can't drive, and that's not on me. <laughs> so before you buy your wife a $100,000 car, I'm, I'm sure she could suck dick, but let's take it for a driver test. Let's, <laughs> let's make sure lessons. she's not going to aggravate people. But on the other hand, the reason why you bought that is because you're fucking your receptionist. So yeah. you're never going to take the ride with her anyway. So why, you know. 
Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> get, Joey, this is what we want. I get Word emotional. to the wise, don't, don't cut Joey Diaz off. I get emotional. She didn't or cut me off. Or to your wedding. She didn't cut me off. She beeped at me and tried to like no, eh, fuck her. move back. No, you didn't cut in. Yeah. You, you were too busy up. looking around. Ah, ah. <laughs> so 300 to a nickel is what you yeah, usually But drop. I'm not going to your fucking <laughs> wedding. <laughs> And I'm listen. My daughter already talked to me about a sixteen-year-old quinceanera, or yeah. whatever. Uh huh. The sixteen, sweet, yeah, sweet sixteen. Sure. I told her it's either sweet sixteen or college. There's no sweet sixteen in my fucking house. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. When I, I'm a Cuban kid, I had sure. to go to a sweet sixteen. I went to one of them. Uh huh. Fuck you. Fuck your grandmother being there holding my hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't I'm have, Spanish, dog. Don't I went, when I was a kid, I used to have to take the girl and her grandmother to fucking the movies. Mm-hmm. If I had that option today, if a woman comes up to me, you can take me to the movies. My grandmother, fuck you, and fuck your fucking dirty whore grandmother. I'm not going to movies with none of you. Unless she's licking one ball and you're licking the other. I'm not going to movies with you fucking wenches. But when you're a kid, you agree to that God, shit. Yeah, sure. fuck, trying to get your dick wet. Yeah, why is grandma here busting my party up and shit? <laughs> uh, oh, what Jesus. was the last time you were at an Applebee's, TGI Fridays, or Olive Garden? Years. Years. Really? Okay, respectable. Yeah. You respectable. still doing any fast food at all? Will you have fast food? No, don't touch it. Back when you were doing it, what was your what was your go to? You can't say in and out because I know that's superior. No. Uh Mickey when D's, I lived man. on eighty eighth street, I was not allowed as a child to eat fast food. Okay. So the only time I could eat fast food was when I went to visit my cousins in Miami and we would get McDonald's or KFC, which okay. was, you know, the 70s and 80s. Sure. Yeah. That's when KFC had real chicken. That was, yeah. that was, that, that yeah. was a Unbelievable. Heyday. And McDonald's Big Macs were fucking king. Yeah, yeah, they were awesome. And then over the years, you hear all this shit, and you're like, I can't lie to you. I had a quarter pound about three weeks ago. At night, I was stoned. There was nothing to eat at the house. Mm-hmm. There's a 24-hour one by my house. And I got to tell you something. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. It tasted that fucking good. And you're eating it, you're like, I know that my intestines <laughs> are going to be bleeding and shitting up. blood for a month and whatever, but it doesn't matter. On that particular night, mm-hmm. that fucking quarter pounder with cheese was delicious. Yeah. I won't go back now for six months, yeah, maybe eight yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Go on every six months, it ain't bad. But i tell you what else. I like that Egg McMuffin. Woo! <laughs> Joey, who don't like I, I like, I like that Egg like, McMuffin, too. It's a good kid right there. With a Coke Zero, <laughs> with a lot of ice, dude, and, Wawa, and an or, apple pie. Dude, fucking oh. no McDonald's. McDonald's Coke is found the, yeah. the, the, the best. The best. The best in the world. It's not even fucking. They're getting. The the, they're getting the uncut, pure, not yeah. stepped on shit. Yeah. Everybody else is getting stepped on shit. <laughs> McDonald's comes correct. Will you dip your fries in mayo if you have French fries? No. <laughs> uh, what kind of air freshener you got in a car right now? Reefer. <laughs> <laughs> It's called weed, pussy. It's called weed, <laughs> motherfucker. What are you, a cop, pussy? Shut up. Are okay. you, getting, you get the car wash on the regular? Keep the yes. car clean? Yes and no. And what are you whipping around then, if you don't mind us asking? What do you, what do you Subaru. Do? Subaru. Subaru. Reliable. Okay. 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 Lived in Colorado for 12. Sure. Yeah, that's it. You know, last week it was raining in Jersey. I could see these jerk offs doing 30. I'm doing 90, whizzing <laughs> by them. Beep, beep. Vote for me, cocksuckers. <laughs> Enjoy your fucking Prius. Wait till you get electrocuted. All wheel drive. <laughs> Dumb motherfuckers. Sh- Wait till you get electrocuted. You and Tesla. All of you. Uh, <laughs> Joey zipping around in a Subaru. I fucking love it. That's all that right. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Uh, you take the shoes off in the house or you leave the shoes on? My wife don't want me to take my shoes off. The stink is unbearable. Really? Nah, she doesn't care. Okay. I take the shoes off. Take them off. Say yeah. you go over someone's house for dinner or something. Or hey, I don't take them off. And they say take them off. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm like that dude in Donnie Brasco. I'm not <laughs> taking my shoes off. All right. I lost my father for this I guy. I lost my father. <laughs> um, I assume we got a king size bed at the house. Yes. Okay. Uh, how many pillows you sleep with? There's nine on the bed. There's Ooh. nine on the bed? Three. Holy on my shit. my thing, and then she's got something in the middle. Okay. You know, my wife is from Tennessee. She's always got an ache or a pain. Gotcha. Yeah. How many? So you have two underneath your head or three underneath your head? Two or three. Two or three. Do you hold one? You put one between the legs? No, no. I'm too busy holding the cat. Okay. You yeah. snuggle with the kitty. The cat comes up yeah. by night. All right. Soft Fuck. Uncle Joey. Ce- ceiling fan? Ceiling fan. Fan on when you sleep? Fan on. Got him. You fucking got him. Ceiling it. fan, standing fan, air conditioner, and a little fan that blows this way. I put the sleep apnea mask on, 
I throw some nights I sleep with a hooded sweatshirt on just on principle because I don't. I'd rather freeze yeah. than be hot. Gotcha, oh, man. Three fans going. You got a TV in the room? Yes. You leave the I, TV on when you sleep? No. Nah. Turn it off. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's all right. I have sleep apnea, so I had to program myself that when I hit the bed, I'm going to sleep. Gotcha. Shutting it down. Yeah, I'm not going to watch TV. I watch TV downstairs. I okay. got it too. Do you like the CPAP machine? Yes. Yeah, it's my favorite. My favorite. It, it soothes me. It puts me to sleep. People, I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. I fucking love what it. Are, what are your fucking options? Yeah, I love it. What are your options? To die in time. I love it. In I time, love you're going to fucking it's die. It's funny. If I fall asleep now, with it all, like for some reason, and I don't nap during the day anymore because I use it, but if for some reason I fall asleep on the couch without it, man, I wake up like I'm like I'm yeah, coming out want. of Vietnam. People Ooh. have no idea how bad it is Ooh. and how bad it gets. It elevates quickly. Yeah, I thought I had heart. I thought I had heart problems for a long time because I went to the I went to the um, the cardiologist before I ended up going to the pulmonologist when I got insurance a couple years ago. And I was like, dude, I'm waking up in the middle of the night and I think I'm having a heart attack. Turns out that was just my body shocking me with adrenaline because of my sleep apnea. It's crazy. Woo, man, man. not no more. I'm out night night. It was number one growing disease in men. Sleep apnea. And it wasn't until our boy in Philly died that it woke it all up. Who? Was it Philly? Who's that? Who are we talking about? The defense event. Uh, uh, we're talking about Reggie White? Reggie White. Yeah. yeah. Is that the, what got him? Is that what up, got him? Yeah. I up to the that. up to the up to Reggie White's death, that website was getting twenty five thousand hits a year, maybe. Huh. On the day of his death, two days after his death, his website got a million downloads. People don't have people didn't know they had it. I didn't know that guys, I didn't know I had it. Yeah. I was falling asleep with a cigarette in my hand, like a fucking heroin <laughs> junkie. And I was in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. I was having a lot of problems. I didn't know I was putting on excessive weight quickly. I was putting on weight on 40-pound chunks. Damn. I bought three suits at Hollywood suit outlet one time. And like in March, <laughs> three suits like a Puerto Rican. Three suits, three shirts, a belt, hey, three yeah. pairs of socks uh, and shoes, yeah. quinceanera shoes, <laughs> fucking. Yeah. And guys, I have no reason to lie to you. I bought them like early March for a commercial. And I think mid-April, I went to put them on. I, you know, sometimes you put pants on, you're like, oh, man, I gained a pound. And you squeeze into them. Mm-hmm. Guys, I was three inches apart. Like yeah. it was three inches. Couldn't get there. Like who does that? Yeah. Who could fucking gain three inches? And that went up all the way up to four hundred eighteen pounds. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy too. Yeah, yeah. I've also met a gentleman that can do that. If you still have those suits, I'll take them off your hands. I got tons of shit. Tons of shit. How? What's the wardrobe like? You got suits now? How many suits you got now? Do you think? Do you wear? Or I got know? about eight suits. Eight suits. Eight suits. Eight I suits. think that's a record. But, yeah, but. Are they from like filming the, and shit? Or like from like, wardrobes shit like and shit like yeah. that? No, I didn't steal wardrobe like suits. No, that's ain't stealing. I stole man. roller skates when I did <laughs> movies and shit like that. But <laughs> roller uh, skates. No, I just bought suits over the years. I like suits. I like mm-hmm. dressing up. Yeah. But that, it's like I was telling somebody, I bought a, a nice jacket for the grudge match premiere. Okay. okay. You know how many times I've worn it? For the grudge match yeah, premiere. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the same shit. That's it. That's you know? It. You want to feel nice. You want to look good. And yeah. you go, I'm, like, oh, I'm not a guy that wears a suit. You know what I mean? I'm not that. I'm not that. And suits are bad luck. Weddings, court, and funerals. Yeah, that's it. They're the only time so, I wear them. You got to fucking. Pick. Suits are bad luck. Yeah. Holy shit. Man. Think about that, it. That's oh, a fucking revelation. All right you wear a suit for is for fucking bad things. Court, weddings. Yeah. Fucking church, people dying. You never Funeral, wore. Yeah. You never suits wore. Are you know? bad luck. Yeah. <sighs> it's like, hey, I want a million bucks. Get the suit on. Yeah. yeah what yeah, the yeah. fuck? Uh, you know how to tie a tie? No. <laughs> Who ties it for you? My wife. Okay. Ever been bitten by a dog? A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but not as a burglar. But because of, but, That's where his head went. But because no of, one thought that. But because of fear. I, when I was a kid, I was scared of dogs. I kept getting bit, bit, mm-hmm. bit. I got bit in the face in the Bronx Damn. when I was like four. My mom had a dry cleaner up there. It was a bookie operation. Sure, yeah. And we had a, a German shepherd to protect the place. His name uh-huh. was Killer. And here I am, fuck with him with ham. Yeah. I'm like taking his ham and throwing it at him. The motherfucker just reached up. And Damn. Bit got you. Got a piece of me. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Where are you going on vacation now? You like to you like to get away? You go down anywhere? Go to the Outer Banks. You go to the Outer Banks. Nice. Okay. Go to the Outer, this, this will be our second year. 
Okay. Myself, five other families, all their kids. Beautiful. Nice. Fucking great house. Are these all... Big houses. They got big houses down there. Yeah. Are these all the network that you've built out in Jersey from moving out here? Yes, my wife. Really? Kids and other parents. No actual family members. Like her family, it's just all community. Yeah, her family's in Tennessee. No shit. And my family's in Cuba, dead. I got an uncle. He's 85. He's still in L.A. That's it. No kidding. Mm. Yeah. And you really built it out here. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Down in the that. Outer Banks for a little while. Yeah, I like Shit. the Outer Banks. This year we're going to Tennessee to visit her family. Okay. Nice. Go to Nashville for a week. Eat there some you go. fucking chicken. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever go to fucking Tennessee, go to a place called Lee's Fried Chicken. Oh, Lee's Fried Chicken. One. Oh, it's Lee's a, Fried it's Chicken. It's deep, deep, yeah. deep in the valley, like two hours from Nashville. How does it stack up to Hattie B's down there? Hattie B's is phenomenal. Yeah. It's spicy. Yeah. Lee's is that old brother flavor. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't wear hand nets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I get what you're laying down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's old school. <laughs> Authentic. I'm with you. I love it. That's all right. Uh, I only got a couple more here. Yeah. Uh, have you ever asked for a receipt at a toll booth? No. Okay. <laughs> Do you take the customer receipt with you if you, if you use the card? If like you're checking out at the restaurant. Yeah. Sometimes take I give it, it with to my you? wife because she's the accountant. Well, okay. What about if you uh, if you go into like a Seven Eleven or a store and you pay with a credit card? Do you ever get cash back if you pay with your debit card? You ever say give me give me a twenty or whatever? Sometimes. No, it's been years. Okay. Yeah. Respectable. All right. Uh, have you ever called and requested a song on the radio? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to hit me for a second. <laughs> Do you own binoculars? No. no. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Do you own an air fryer? Yeah, my wife just got one. Yeah, you nice like chicken it? cutlets. She yeah. makes chicken cutlets in there. Oh, I love that. She makes some chicken. Love a cutlet. good cutty. What? Uh, I have just Jersey, Jersey, New York stuff. What's your go-to pizza place now? I'm in Jersey, and I have. I'm surrounded by Staten. good. They're, they got good food Dog. out there. Great food. Listen, I'm surrounded by Staten Island people, mm -hmm. and they know how to throw down. All the restaurants in Jersey, yeah, are pretty much Staten Island people. Yeah, because yeah. if they get them. Staten Island gets money, they go to Jersey. It they goes, go to Jersey. They go to Brooklyn, goes to Staten Island. Staten Island goes to Jersey. I yeah. got a nice rest uh, pizza <laughs> in my neighbor Danino's. Ooh, nice. sounds good. I got and they're Staten Island company, and then I got another one, Carlos from mm -hmm. Staten Island. They're phenomenal, and then I have another one night. By my jujitsu school, it's called uh, Crispy. Okay. Oh, it man. seems from like from when from when you know when we grew up, we grew up in the <laughs> burbs, and you know all the good food was in was in the city and stuff like that. And we've lived in the city, we lived in Philly, we lived in New York, but the suburban South Jersey, North Jersey area, the suburban Philly area, the pizza places, the the food, the sandwiches, the food out there has gotten so much better than in the cities. I feel. They're just unbelievable it's spots. Unbelievable. You can't. There's no good sandwich spot in the city anymore. You got to go to a bodega, and they give you like they throw two pieces of American cheese at you on on white toast. It sucks. You know, Joe called me this morning because the UFC's in town, uh -huh. and he sent me a text, and he goes, "I want to go to this place in Jersey. There's a restaurant 800 feet from my house. Nice. Holy fuck. Good stuff. It's called El Nido. It's organic Italian. Ooh. I'm so if you want chicken cutlets, Parmesan is not there." Shrimp palm. No. They got no lasagna. They got like blacking squid. Yeah. With fucking toe crab, crab toe. Oh, they that's got all fucking, right. They got everything is organic. The chicken, when you look at the chicken, you're like, this don't look right. Yeah, because you've never seen good you're not, chicken. Yeah, before. you're used to seeing fucked <laughs> you're up seeing chicken. You've seen steroided chicken. Yeah. This yeah. chicken, it's white like that newspaper. Really? Man. It's so fucking delicious there. Huh. Man. So, yeah, if he comes down tonight, maybe we'll go over there. And that's right. in South, that's in fucking Marlboro. Yeah. yeah. Out in the burbs. Ooh, I'm telling the you. Burbs. Yeah, they got good food. Guys, man. they're not fucking around down there. Now, no. you know. You do one Italian dish. What is it? Escarole and beans. Really? <laughs> that's the classiest answer we've ever got. Oh, that just pulled you out of skiing and jeans, shit. Joey. God, with pancetta, little pieces of prosciutto. Okay. I'll take you to a place right now if you want to go right over the fucking. Road. We'll go to the ferry. Look at the ferry. It's three miles from the ferry. It's called Rudy's 
They make a fucking escarole and beans, and you go into when you eat the escarole, you go into an Italian trance. Like you, <laughs> you start hearing Perry, you start hearing Perry Como music and shit. <laughs> And cousins, and no, 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 no. There's a place by me, Osteria. When you go in there, they don't have a cup of it, so you can't order with anything else. Mm-hmm. It's the escarole and beans. It's this you get the bowl, bag. and I just get a loaf of bread and crushed red pepper oh. and cheese, Parmesan cheese, and you're good to fucking go. That's it, Out huh? The door, baby, man. I, I'm, I'm good here. I'm fucking solid. What are you thinking, Kip? I mean, I love them to death. The escarole try, but the, I mean he's trash, and I fucking love it, baby. You are a fucking white trash, as you said it. White Joey. trash. He's the bro. only Cuban white trash guy I know. But and you, I love you, him. you got red pepper flakes of class dribbled in. I'll <laughs> yeah, tell you that. Ones, <laughs> little ones. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joey Diaz, the book is tremendous. The life of a comedy savage. You have to check this out. It is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Joey, congratulations. Thanks, thank you. This is this guys. Is thank fantastic. you very much thank for you, having man. me this on. This is been great. We can't I, thank you. I enough. didn't know if I should contact you guys. I didn't know anything. I'm like, those guys are big time. No, Joe, what are you what talking are you about? Joey? We've been trying to get you for two years. <laughs> you didn't call not. anybody. You didn't tell nobody. <laughs> now he's mad. <laughs> Walk through fucking osmosis. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But guys, thank you for having <laughs> thank me. You, this brother. has been a thank great you. fucking thank time. Buddy, man. thank you so much. We Everybody, you, make sure you listen to Joey's Joint, as I'm sure you do. Um, Kippy, what do you got for him? We're all we're all over the road. Get tickets. Live shows are selling out. We fucking love you. Thank you for the support, baby. Gang, we love you. Joey, we love you. Thank you we so love much. You guys also. Thank, Thank you. you. Gang, we'll see you next week. Peace.